Hey guys, Chauncey Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop here today. Today you're going to go out, see what things are going on today, see what things are on sale. I know the main big thing that comes out today, you know, is Beauty and the Beast, you know, the new live action film. There's going to be a number of different, you know, exclusive versions of that one at like Best Buy, Target, Walmart. So you're definitely going to go and check those out. And, you know, Walmart as well should have in a bunch of new stuff because usually the first Tuesday of every month, you know, they change out the section. So then they get in a whole bunch of other, you know, new releases as well in the actual section in the, uh, you know, movie section. So definitely going to check those out as well. Also at the end of this video going to have a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some movies I received to review and talk about for you guys. So stay tuned for those as well as two really cool unboxings. An unboxing this really cool limited edition Shaun of the Dead Blu-ray as well as an unboxing for the movie Cure for Wellness. So a really really cool thing. So stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And also uh, this uh, Saturday will be my new DVD Blu-ray update video as well. But anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And they have the big standee out here for, you know, Beauty and the Beast. And they have in here the exclusive edition here, which is, you know, the exclusive 32-page storybook edition of that one here. It's in um, this kind of cool, kind of hardbound case like that. It's kind of like the, I think it's like the digibook version of this one. And it's like a case like this. So a 32-page storybook thing in here. So that's pretty cool. And it's $24.99 for that edition. So it's the same price for the regular uh, Blu-ray edition of the movie as well. But really like this movie a lot. I, I think it's probably my favorite of their live action ones. And like the animated movie was never one that I, I feel like I didn't watch it as much as I watched like Little Mermaid and stuff. That one I would love to see them do a live action movie of is, you know, the Little Mermaid one. But over here though in the section though, they also have this exclusive um, limited edition one as well that's the same kind of thing, you know, uh, that comes with a 32 page storybook as well as a lith lithograph in here for uh, Bambi. This is the anniversary edition one of that one. And that one's the same. That one's, you know, $24.99 as well for, for that edition. And then the uh, Blu-ray as well is the same price for that one. So these are cool. Two different exclusive edition ones in here today for Bambi and for uh, Beauty and the Beast. And they finally have these in here. I haven't seen these ones yet. They seem like they finally got these Still books in here. And they have it for London Has Fallen, uh, Straight Out of Compton, uh, Unbroken, Eight Mile, The Sting, To Kill a Mockingbird, and then Scarface, and Lone Survivor. Like, and I think these have been out for the last few weeks, but they finally have them in at this location. And the only other new release I see in here today, and like I said, I'm going to have an unboxing for this movie at the very end of this video, so definitely stay tuned for that, is a movie called A Cure for Wellness, you know, that stars Dane Dehan and Maya Goff. I love this movie so much. Such a cool, amazing concept movie. Love this one. Absolutely can't recommend that enough. It's definitely one of my favorite movies of this year, or one of the top ones so far. Just love that movie. Other than that, though, I don't think there was anything else in here new today, so we'll see if, what else they have at Walmart today into Walmart we go and I've got to cross my fingers in here, you know, going into here, that hopefully they put out all the new releases and stuff, because a lot of times I come in here, it's about 12.30 now, and the new stuff isn't out yet, so hopefully I don't have to go to a couple different Walmarts to see all the stuff that came out today, so we shall see. And it looks like all the stuff's out in here. Uh, their edition, you know, I think their version might be sold out, their exclusive version. I don't remember what their exclusive one was in here, but their um, is $19.96 for this. I think it's like $2 less in here than it was in Target. I think um, this this one came out today, this movie called You're Gonna Miss Me. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna miss me. Some movie with, you know, uh, you know, Eric Roberts in it. Don't know anything at all about this one. This one came out this week as well. This uh, movie starring Michelle Rodriguez, and I really like this. Michelle Rodriguez plays a male character who's like a hitman, and she kills Sigourney Weaver's brother, and Sigourney Weaver gets revenge on her, or on him by turning him, you know, giving him a sex change operation, and then he got tries to go and get revenge and stuff. This is actually a pretty fun movie. It has a real 70s vibe, because they actually wrote the script of this movie in the 70s, and it took a long time to finally get made. Uh, this other one was today, Aftermath, uh, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Another one I really liked, a very, very sad movie, but really pretty cool movie. I'm going to have a review of this one at the end of this video. This one, Kill Em All, that was today, as well as this one. And so I'm going to have a review of this one this weekend. Uh, so this movie starring Amelia Clark, uh, you know, Voice from the Stone. This is like a kind of a haunted house sort of ghost story kind of thing, but it was pretty cool. Like I said, I'm going to be reviewing that this weekend. Uh, this one, I believe, was today, this movie called uh, Lady Blood Fight. 
another one I don't know much at all about this one if you guys have seen this one let me know how that one is and this one I believe was today this movie called the mummy of Tatukamon or something like that something from BBC I don't exactly yeah Tatukamon I don't I'm definitely not saying that right definitely a lot of stuff today this one this JK Simmons movie uh, you know with Emil Hirsch called All Nighter that was today as well as on dropping everything in the glasses and always dropping everything and this one uh, Amanda Seyfried movie was today as well this one called The Last Word but heard kind of mixed opinions on this one uh, she's also been in the new season of Twin Peaks and she just started being in it really cool to see her on that show that Twin Peaks has been totally amazing and then um, I just gotta put this back and then the other one today as well as this one journey into the west and then i am dragon now i'll take a look over the section though and see the other things today now over here in the section though some of the new things and this is kind of funny they're releasing like universal is releasing these but you know um screen factory had released this one on blu-ray this one i saw what you did and i think the other part of it was i know what you are like these kids that were like messing around prank calling and the guy comes after them and these ones i think were today these other ones called stick with burt reynolds and let's see what other ones is this one uh never let go this one came out today there's a lot of releases today uh sky on fire was today this thing's pretty cool this is an exclusive only to walmart release of um don't knock twice this is going to be here for i think like a month or two only sold at walmart first this other one was today this one looks kind of interesting we called dark silence I don't know much at all about this one. Definitely gonna have to look into this one and see if this one's worth checking out. But other than that, they also released this, which is kind of funny. It's another one that Shout Factory had released in the past on Blu-ray. The movie with Michael Caine called The Island. This is like pretty cool movie. I remember really liking this one. But it's interesting to see that they're you know releasing DVD versions of these ones that you know Shout Factory had put out. This one was today as well, Executioner. Another one I don't know much at all about as well as this one um, Boone the Bounty Hunter so definitely was a very very big release weekend here today um, yeah so definitely a lot of different things in here but definitely is interesting to see these ones kind of coming out again oh yeah and this one was today as well this sense of an ending and the only movie I saw this past weekend, you know, was Wonder Woman, which, you know, has been getting these amazing reviews, did really, really well at the box office. I really loved the film. I thought the movie was extremely well done. Definitely the best, you know, DC Comics film in a really long time. You know, because, you know, Batman v Superman was okay. Uh, Suicide Squad, though, I really didn't love the Suicide Squad film. It was, oh, there was parts of it that were all right. Um, but I, some of the stuff, like the music, I didn't love. They were using, like, all these kind of rock songs and kind of, like, songs that didn't really fit too much to the movie and then they kind of like abandoned that about 45 minutes into the movie then they kind of just started having like you know film score throughout the movie I don't know it was, it was okay it was those both of those ones were kind of like watchable ones I feel like Wonder Woman though was actually like a, one of those ones you could actually go back and watch again and again and actually it was just a really really well done film um it will be interesting, though, to see that, you know, since it did so well, if then now Marvel goes and finally does the uh, Black Widow movie, because they've never given Scarlett Johansson's character, you know, from the Avengers films, you know, her own film, and they've been kind of been sitting on it. So hopefully now that they saw how well Wonder Woman did, then they end up, you know, doing that movie, because that would definitely be one I'd be interested in seeing, because they really never really set up her character or gave her much of anything in those, you know, to, to her past in those films. So that would definitely be interesting to see, you know, if they finally, you know, go and do that now. But then, you know, anyway, though, below this video though let me know what you guys thought of Wonder Woman if you guys saw it and what movies you know you saw this past weekend as well if you saw anything else into Best Buy we go and over here in the front though it doesn't look like they have any of their editions of Beauty and the Beast left as well it seems like these have been selling out because I know they had a steelbook of that one the steelbook was $22.99 they do have this one in here still this only at Best Buy this like on lenticular packaging for Bambi and that one's $22.99 for that one so it's like three dollars more for this one but this is a pretty cool one though for this but like I said it seems like that is sold out you know the steelbook of that one I'll have to see if it's in the section as well though 
Well, in the section though, they actually do have a couple of them left. Here's what the steelbook looks like, you know, the uh, collectible steelbook packaging of Beauty and the Beast. So that's a pretty cool one. Like I said, really, really like this movie a lot. Definitely one of my favorite live action ones that they've done. And I also really love Cinderella. Um, and some of the other things that came out today was this one called A United Kingdom. And I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. And then this one, I think I might get this movie. I was really interested in seeing this one. This movie called The Axe Murders at like Versilia or something like that. This movie like has Sean Whalen in it. It's only $13.99. This is from, you know, a Scream Factory one. This is one I was really interested in seeing. Kind of sounded like a cool movie. So I definitely think I'm going to get this one. And then this one came out. I talked about this a little while ago. This one, uh, Child of Satan. That one's really cheap. That's only $8.99 for that one. For a Blu-ray, that's like probably about as cheap as you can get. At least that I can say I've seen a really long time for a brand new release movie. But other than that, though, that's all the pretty much the main things that came out today. But I think I'm definitely going to get this one. This sounds like kind of a cool slasher movie. Yeah, so I ended up picking that one up. Like I said, it looked like a kind of you know cool movie. Sean Whalen's in the movie. Looks like kind of a cool like slasher kind of horror movie. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray shopping video. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And I stay tuned now for a couple of new DVD Blu-ray reviews as well as the unboxing. And then this Saturday, my new uh, DVD Blu-ray update will be up as well. Anyway, though, thanks again for watching. And the first one I got from Arrow Videos, and we called Evil Ed. Really love this artwork on this one. I have not seen this movie in so long. Long. It's basically though about this company that has like acquires all these like you know super gory splatter horror films and they need you know they sell them like this certain line of horror films as well and they need to like edit out all the super gore the violence the nudity and stuff to sell like for the international cuts of the movie and they need to have an editor edit all the stuff out and like recut the movie the original editor goes nuts when he's editing and ends up killing himself and like blows himself up so they end up bringing in Ed you know to edit who works the, the in the same building and he's like you know he really used to editing like really artsy kind of films real straight lace dramas and that kind of stuff and he starts editing these really gory things and kind of like what happened in the first guy ed starts to kind of become like kind of weirder and weirder and crazier and crazier from watching all this super gory crazy stuff that he's editing and it kind of starts to drive him nuts and it's kind of like him like going getting like all more and more off the deep end and he's editing in the the one producer who's like runs the business he's editing in his house and he's in there kind of locking himself in there getting worse and worse and worse and it's kind of like he's starting to almost kind of be taken over by something is kind of like taking him over and driving him nuts and there's these really weird kind of things that he's seeing like this really weird creature and it's like you know and it's like kind of monster it kind of is like one of the gremlins like a, a crazy knockoff version of the gremlins that he's seeing in his fridge it's just a very very strange movie and it gets weirder and weirder as the movie goes along it has on here though the um the special edition cut of the movie which i think is about like six minutes longer and they like added in some new stuff like during when he was editing the footage there's like a montage scene and a couple other things that they added as well you know, some more gore and stuff like that. But it also has on here the original cut of the film, which I don't think had ever been released before, because I think when they released this years back on DVD, the only one that they had, I think, was the extended cut of this. It also has on here uh, a brand-new, never-before-seen making of on here, which is three hours long. There's... um. As well on here, there's an introduction from the uh, writer and director on here to the film, um, some featurettes on the movie, deleted scenes, uh, you know, talking about, too, putting together the special edition. It also has in here the original uh, artwork as well on the back here. I always remember this crazy artwork of, you know, Ed, like, you know, like I said, he's just kind of going nuts editing. I always like things that deal with filmmaking and all that kind of stuff. It also has in here a booklet, and I can't show some of this stuff because it's very gory, but... And I got just a very creepy, strange movie. Really like this movie. Like I said, I had not seen this movie in years. The next one here from Arrow Video as well. And this is from the Arrow Academy line. And this is a pretty cool movie. I, lo I really love the concept of this. And it's a movie called uh, Spotlight on a Murderer. This is a French film from, I think it's like 19... 
61. It was kind of funny too. Like the there's a like the music in this one. There's like this theme that you hear throughout the movie, and it kept on reminding me of the like almost like the person who did the music in the Ellen ride. If you were one on the Ellen ride at Epcot, it's still there now. It's like from like '96. It was been there since. But there's like the, this song you hear in the Ellen ride, and I almost feel like the the guy who composed the Ellen ride music was inspired by this because it sounds so similar to this theme you hear throughout this movie. But it's about this old man, and he's some kind of like a like a count like of this castle, not like a Count Dracula, but like the head of this castle owns this really you know fancy like the castle in this movie was one of the biggest you know uh, you know characters to this movie. It was a really really cool old school castle, but he knows he's gonna die. And he basically goes and hides himself in this room, like behind glass, and kind of walls himself in. And he does it to kind of like mess with the family because he knows that, you know, because since he knows he's going to die, he kind of hides himself. So, you know, the count has gone missing and the, you know, the, you know, the doctors say that he only had like one day left. So the whole family kind of comes there, you know, knowing pretty much that he's dead to kind of like get his inheritance but you know then they're saying well you can't have any inheritance or any of the money for five years in t you know unless a body you know his body shows up and you know he hit himself in the wall and then like the family are all there and they're all kind of figuring out what they're going to do because they can't have any of the money they can't like sell anything inside of the castle because it's not theirs because they don't have his body so it's and they have to kind of upkeep the building as well the castle as well so they're kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do if they're going to have it be like a tourist trap or what they're going to do with it and it's kind of more weird stuff happens, but it's a very interesting concept of a movie. Really pretty cool, though. And, um... Has on here a feature out in the movie, a, sh a thing about the location on here, as well as some interviews and a little look inside. Like there's a booklet with you know some pictures and stuff like that from the film. But this is like a, just a pretty cool movie. I don't know. Like I said, it was a very cool concept to this one. The next one here from Anchor Bay is a movie called Chapter and Verse, a Harlem story. And this the act, the main actor in this one. I looked him up, and this was like his first you know feature film. And he was really really good in this movie. Uh, the other actor. Um, and this is Loretta Devine, and I always think of her from, um, I'm hundred percent pretty certain she was in Urban Legends. And I always remember, I'm pretty sure she was the cop in that. I always think of her from that, and it's been a couple other things as well, but I, I think I'm pretty certain that's what I remember her from. Like I said, this movie called Chapter and Verse, and it's basically though about this guy who, you know, he was in jail, I think it was for like, 10 years or something like that and he just got out of prison and it's kind of him trying to get a job after prison and what he's going to do and you know he has all these skills in computers and computer work and can fix computers and all that but he kind of can't use any of that because no one will because of his criminal record and what he did in the past and stuff he's having a you know a really bad time you know getting a job in that field so he kind of works at this um kind of meals on wheels type business where he goes around and delivers the food but he can't drive because he you know he doesn't have his license anymore so he kind of goes on foot and it's kind of about him and trying to you know really work on this and hopefully get another job doing what he wants but he's just kind of him, him going around and he's meeting some of his old friends that he was with you know knew when he was kind of in gangs with them and he's kind of trying to not get back into any of the bad stuff he did and try and go forward in his life and not have anything bad happen and he kind of meets Lavetta uh, Divine's character and when he's delivering the food and he kind of becomes friends with her because she's sick and she's in her apartment and her um grandson is kind of kind of reminds him of himself though because you know he's kind of messing around with these gangs and doing some bad stuff and he's kind of trying to keep him together and that's kind of what it is i i really thought this was actually a pretty good movie really really well acted and like i said i was really surprised it was the the one actor's first movie he did a really good job and i believe he wrote the movie as well i'm pretty sure I, yeah yeah he was actually one of the writers of this movie as well but really pretty well done done character piece film the next one this is something that i never i really not not heard much about this this is a, you know set in the 1930s in ukraine and this is about it was kind of like the problem with them with russia at this time and they were i think it was like russia was kind of like trying to control ukraine and kind of kind of controlling what they're doing and um taking their crops and stuff and like taking their food and it was basically though about this guy whose family lives on this farm and he has his girlfriend there and his family is like the the russians are kind of coming in there and taking their land and like killing the, their people and like not 
you know, if they don't do what they say, and it's like he's they're basically trying to like make them suffer and making it so they can't have any food really, and they're pretty much starving them, and all these people had died, and it's kind of set with this love story between the, the the one guy on the farm and his girlfriend and what he's trying to do and how he ha tries to leave and try and get money to send back and try and help kind of because of what they're doing taking away all their food and stuff he wants to try and leave and get make some money so they can actually have access to some money to get some food and not starve because of what's going on it's a very sad movie though about you know what was going on at this time like I said I did not know too much about this whole thing and this is all based on a true story but I said like around the love story aspect of the two but really really well done movie it's a lot of people in this one in this uh Terrence Stamp is in this movie Max Irons but really really interesting movie though uh the next one here from Paramount this is one that I had never seen before and I love this movie this movie was so good and it's a movie starring Omar Epps and Tupac and like I said I, I've I think one of the only K Tupac movies I've seen, you know, was gang related. And he was also in, when he was in the Digital Underground, he was in Nothing But Trouble, in that small scene when he was like, you know, with the group. But I guess this is one I had never seen before called Juice. And this was an amazing movie. And I, I didn't even know that Omar Epps, too, was acting when he was so young. Because I think he was like 20 years old in this, something like this. And I didn't know he was he had been acting that long you know, since he was that young. And it's basically, though, about a group of these four friends. And the star of this is pretty much Omar Epps, though, because his three friends, though, they're, he's, you know, Omar Epps really wants to do scratching, like, you know, like DJing and things like that, and kind of like really do an honest thing with his life. But his friends are kind of getting into the kind of gang activity and kind of messing around. Mainly Tupac's character is really like, he does some pretty bad, heinous stuff in this. And it's a kind of a coming of age kind of thing about these teenagers and Omar Epps' character trying to kind of stay out of what's going on. But it's very difficult because of what Tupac's character is doing and you know he's friends with them and he doesn't really want to betray his friends but yet he doesn't really want to get into this whole thing that's going on this movie too there's a lot of movies too that kind of ripped off this movie even the movie Hurricane Streets kind of copied this movie a little bit it wasn't exactly the same but it was kind of like the similar kind of story that was happening but this was such a well acted movie Tupac was amazing in this movie and um, it was kind of a funny thing too I never talked about this but when I was like a kid I, I think like maybe it was like a 12 or 13 I think when Limp Bizkit was big I really wanted to do that DJing and racket scratching and all that stuff and I remember I was like really really at one point about to buy the turntable and all that stuff like that was something I never ever spoke about but this has on here though uh, new filmmaker commentary and interviews on here and then vintage, vintage interviews with Tupac and Queen Latifah but you know this is the brand new you know um, 25th anniversary edition of this one I don't think this had ever been released on Blu-ray before as far as I know and a lot of the other Tupac movies have not been released on Blu-ray either. I don't think so. I think the only gang-related, I think, are the only other Tupac ones on Blu-ray. The next one from Sony is a movie called Kill 'Em All, starring um, you know, John Claude Van Damme. And this is kind of an interesting thing. It's like this um this police officer is talking to this nurse about like something had happened in the um in the hospital. And it's a hospital too, it was kind of like a rundown hospital because it, it was kind of under construction and kind of old and stuff, and they didn't have security cameras in there or anything, so they couldn't really know exactly what had happened. But a lot of people had died in there because basically what happens though is um and she's telling the story of this and it cuts back and forth between them interviewing her her and then her telling the story and stuff like that, uh, you know, to what had happened. And it's Basically, though, John claude Van Damme's character comes in there all injured and really messed up. And the second he comes into this hospital, though, um, you know, she starts to treat him. And then these bad guys start to come into the hospital and are kind of like hunting him and coming after him and trying to find him in there. And it's kind of like the whole, like kind of a nightmare situation going on with this you know these bad guys coming into the hospital coming after him and like like I said she's having to tell the story to these cops because the cops are like they don't have any footage in this in the thing so they have to try and put the pieces together but they do know some of the people who were in there so then they start saying well you know who were these people and I and we believe they were there this part of this group and what were what did they do when they came in and so it's kind of like essentially what that is and it's like sort of telling the whole thing that happened happened about this crazy stuff set in this hospital 
about you know John Claude Van Damme with all these people kind of coming after him and her trying to explain you know what she knows about the whole thing and they're trying to figure out like if she had anything to do with this or if she's covering something up and or if she's lying about something. But like I think this is kind of an interesting one, not the absolute greatest movie or anything like this. But if you guys like John Claude Van Damme movies though, definitely you know check this one out. Uh, the next one here from um, Fox is a movie called A United Kingdom and I remember seeing the trailer for this one. I don't know if this one got a big release or not because I I remember it's like. I had seen the trailers, but I don't remember it being like in any theaters near where I was. And it's a movie starring David Oyello and Rose, you know, Rosamund Pike, you know, from Gone Girl, and a couple other movies as well. This is based on a true story, and it's basically though about this was set, I think, set in the 1940s. And this is the, you know the time when there was like people were still having like racism and all that kind of stuff, and you know, um, you know, Roseman Pike's character ends up meeting David Oyelowo, and he's you know going to pretty much be like the the king almost like the prince of South America and he's kind of getting ready to get to the point where he's going to go and take over the throne there but they end up meeting while he is in England and they kind of become you know start a relationship together and it's kind of like I said at the time with racism and the fact that she's white and he's black and, and it's kind of people are having a problem with all of that and you know they're together and you know she you know they, they really fall in love and she wants to go with him to South Africa and kind of eventually get married and that it's kind of about the whole thing about how people in South Africa are really taking badly to the idea that they're together and they're giving him all kind of problems and it could mess up his chances of taking over there you know to the the, the, the being like the, the leader of the South America group that he is in um you know, in South Africa, very, very well done character piece. Very sad, too, about, you know, the stuff that was going on at the time and stuff like that. But it has on here, though, a making of, uh, a, a thing, location about the filming, you know, uh, a feature ad on the filming location, this one, as well as a London Film Festival opening night premiere feature ad on this one as well. Uh, the next one here from... Um, from Well Go USA, and this was an interesting movie uh, starring Army Hammer, Army Hammer, and it's a movie called Mine. It's, you know, it's kind of like, you don't know exactly what war this exactly is, because it's like kind of an unknown area, but it's him and his partner, and they're on a mission, and, you know, Arnie Hammer doesn't want to, he's supposed to fire on this target, and it, it's it, like at this wedding, and he doesn't want to do that, because he, he doesn't think that the person could be the bad guy, and he's like afraid of doing it. And, you know, they're saying, go ahead and do it, take, you know, take it, take them out. And he doesn't do it. And they end up having a problem happen. So they end up getting away and leaving because of it. But they kind of end up trapped out in the middle of the desert. And the army can't pick them up until they can get to a certain location. And they end up walking. And then the one, um, you know, who's with him, Army Hammer's character with him, he ends up stepping on a landmine and getting terribly, terribly injured and dies. But then right afterwards, you know, at the same time he stepped you know, on the, the uh, mine, Army Hammer's character steps on a mine and he's basically frozen there. He doesn't know what he's going to do because he's afraid it's going to blow up. You know, because it's probably because of what happened to his partner with him. He knows it's going to happen to him. So he calls the, you know, the uh, other soldiers about what happened. They're like, oh, we're not going to be able to be there for like 36 hours or something. So he's kind of stuck kneeling down on this thing. And he's having kind of visions and he's remembering things that happened to him in his life. And, you know, how he kind of led up to him getting out to the wars. It's definitely a very, very interesting movie like a real tense thing too is like is he going to get off of this thing you know what is going to happen you know if they're, are they going to be able to get to him in time because he's stuck right in the heat so he's kind of getting dehydrated and like all you know all in the sun and everything it's a very very interesting like i said concept for a movie it has on here though deleted scenes a making of on here and some things on the visual effects on this one like i said this one is from well go usa uh, the next one here from um, Via, Vis uh, Via Pictures is a movie called Sacrilege. And I kind of like this movie. It's about these this couple that are trying to buy a gift for their one friend. Um for her birthday and they buy this like weird kind of music box kind of uh sort of like a music box jewelry kind of box thing that makes music and they buy this thing and of course it's some kind of a cursed box the second they get this and give it to the friend this weird kind of like entity is kind of haunting the woman and they're trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do and how they're going to get rid of it because it kind of you know they kind of 
it doesn't really happen to them, but it kind of gets passed off onto the friend, and then what ends up having the friend, and it kind of like starts haunting them and the house. And it's kind of them trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get rid of this thing, and it like deals with ghost hunters. It kind of has the feel of like a Conjuring kind of movie. It definitely has that kind of vibe to this with the ghost hunters and trying to figure out exactly what this entity spirit wants and if there's any like way of getting rid of them and you know trying to set things back to normal again. But I kind of like this one. Like I said, it was kind of a creepy Conjuring type thing with this music cursed music box. Uh, the next one here from. Um, this is from Umbrella Entertainment. This is a... Now, just keep in mind, though, this one is a Region B release. Or I think it's a Region... Yeah, it's a, I think it's region free, but it's one of those ones that's in PAL format, so you need to make sure you have a region free player in order to actually play this one. Though and it's a movie called The Sublet, and this is one about like this couple moving into this kind of weird old apartment, and it's I guess like since they say sublet, it's kind of like an apartment with like somebody else in it, sort of to it, like a weird kind of apartment building. But they move into this place. And of course, though, like right when they're there, the um, you know, it's like, and the mother has a kid and stuff, and she starts seeing like outside the window this really strange woman, like standing outside, like lurking in, looking at them, and she's trying to figure out exactly what is happening. And it's kind of she's starting to kind of get all cracked up and stuff in this house, and like the husband is like he's all worried about being an actor so he's going to auditions and doing these things and saying oh i may have to leave for a while and she's like well i don't know what's happening here and he's like well you're gonna have to just deal with things and he's like doesn't really he's not even worried about being at the house and he's all obsessed with like going to auditions and doing all that kind of stuff and he thinks he might get this tv show and have to be away for months and stuff he's like well you'll be fine here while she's dealing with all of this stuff going on in the house and stuff i kind of like this movie like i said it's one of those kind of creepy in the house kind of movies and this one here is a pretty cool set now this is a region free one so and you know you, you can watch this one there's no region coding or anything on this blu-ray this is a double feature of two canon films and these are ones that they talked about in the canon documentary I think, you know, called Electric Boogalo, and they released that on Blu-ray as well, Umbrella Entertainment. And these are two ones on here, Enter the Ninja, Ninja, Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja. Revenge of the Ninja didn't have... Um, the same actor in it though it didn't have that Franco Nero it wasn't in that one because they like dubbed over Franco Nero and gave him like an American accent and stuff and he was in like some of the Django movies and a lots and lots of stuff but like these were just like super really like corny um, kung fu movies the second one was a little bit better with the kung fu stuff but there was some really really cheesy cheesy effects and stuff and they were, they were the, the opening to uh, enter the ninja was amazing though when he was like training and they were like cutting off heads and it was was like throwing these kind of smoke bombs that like and the way they threw them and stuff it was so cheap and weird it was just this big cloud of smoke and stuff these are just really really fun ridiculous movies and they both look really great on blu-ray they did a really good job cleaning these ones up but definitely really good transfers on these but if you guys are fans of like these kind of ridiculous kind of cheesy american made kung fu type movies definitely check these out and i think the director of this one i believe the uh, of enter the ninja was the one who was the head of Canon. I, I'm pretty sure he was because I know he had made some films but if you guys are fan of these movies definitely check these ones out and the next one from Full Moon is the brand new Evil Bong film. And it's pretty cool they released this on Blu-ray because I don't think they've released a lot of the other Evil Bongs. I don't think any of them had actually come to Blu-ray. This is Evil Bong 666. And these are really fun like movies. And this is, you know, stars Mindy Robinson. And she's playing a different character in this. As she's opening back up the medical or the marijuana type store. And it's like this Evil Bong that kind of has these plans of like, you know, getting souls and stuff like that. But Mindy Robinson's character is kind of like a, kind of like a and she like kind of wants to like kill people that come in there and she has like kind of enjoys killing people and it's kind of like all these ridiculous people that come in and weird stuff that happens I, the stuff that I love too they filmed some of this on Venice Beach and they definitely just went out there and filmed it and that's what I kind of thought was funny because like when they're filming it because the one character was dressed like the clown from the Killjoy movies and like she was out there and everybody kept looking at the camera like 
Hmm. And I, I don't know. There's something. There's. I, I. It was reminding me of like those um, '70s Italian movies when they were like um, night train murders, and a lot of those ones where they definitely just set up the camera and had like the actors, and they just filmed it out there with no permission and stuff like that. And like everybody was just walking by and looking and stuff. There's just something amazing about that when the extras are just real people in the background and they're just looking at the camera and like flipping it off and all that kind of thing. I don't know. There's something about that was like amazing. I don't. I just. I just like that. It was like total rogue the way they did it, and it was kind of cool that they just did it. And it was like we're filming out in there, and and like just what people do in the background is what people do in the background. Because I I was I definitely was paying attention to people in the background more than I probably should have. But these are just really really fun over the top movies with this talking bong and everything. I don't know. These they're really fun movies. Has one here though. Um, a bunch of different making of featurettes on this movie. The next one here from. Um, uh, Candy Factory films the movie called Wichita, and this is kind of about this um, this guy who's like a writer on this children's TV show, and he's going out to kind of go to a writer's retreat with all the other writers and some of the the voice actors and stuff on this kids show and the kids show is like just about to get canceled because the ratings are going down and people aren't had, didn't like the last season as much so they're kind of out there and they're trying to figure out how they're going to save the show and make the episodes and they have to make a like a bunch of episodes in a certain amount of time and they have really no time to do them they have to have all these scripts done and they're out there and the writer guy is really kind of strange and intrusive and kind of weird Weird. and they're out there and he starts setting up all these cameras and kind of spying on all the people and watching them and like he's just a very weird like voyeuristic strange guy it's kind of like it leads up to some stuff happening and stuff like some bad stuff it's just a really really peculiar movie about this really weird guy and it's definitely a kind of interesting concept too about like writing for this kid show and then this weird guy is behind the whole thing and the last one I want to show you guys this one is a, from a, a site called everything blu-ray um, I believe that's the name of the site. I'm going to put the link exactly below for where you guys can get this. I think it's Blu-rays for everyone, I, I believe. Um, so I don't mess it up the, the exact place it is. And these are this really cool edition here of um, Shaun of the Dead. And this is a region free release, though, all region disc. It's the discs that were out from the UK in here. And they have in here these, like, this code, like, kind of card in the back, credit card in the back that says this is uh, the number 83 of 500. So there's 500 of this set on here. And it's very cool embossed set here of the name and. Um, I'll take a look inside. You guys can get two different versions of these or this version like this that comes with uh, both versions of this in here. And the one here has it in a slip cover like this, this cool one. And here's a look at the side and the back. And then inside is the steel book. And this steel book is, um, these are all that, you know, exclusive to them. And look on the back of the steelbook. And inside, though, they have some cards and stuff. They have, like, some of them come with these signed cards of the two actors who played the uh, zombie twins in here, as well as, like, a name tag in here. Um, here's a look inside here at this. It's like the uh, free electronic sales advisor, like Shaun of the Dead's name tag. Some other uh, picture cards in here, as well as... Um, uh, here's some of the other picture cards. Like I said, it's a bunch of different picture cards in this version of it, as well as a picture of both, you know, uh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg's characters from the movie, as well as them with some of the zombies. And here's a look inside, too, at the Steelbook itself. But there's also, though, like I said, there's this version of it, which comes in this kind of a slipcase, or there's this one that has the um, one that moves like this a little bit to it, and on the back is the record. And then inside, though, it has the same uh, steel book. No, I actually think this steel book was this steel book the same as the other one. Yeah, inside the steel books are the same, but this edition though has some different kind of cards and stuff in here. But just want to let you guys know this one is out. I'm gonna put a link though exactly though where you guys can get these editions. But these, like I said, are limited to 500. Really cool one. And like I said, it's in this kind of a case like this. Or you guys can get them. You know, in that case, it comes with both. Or you can guys can get these ones separately they're also releasing a set of the mummy all three of the mummy films the mummy trilogy together in a really cool kind of set like this as well that they have up for pre-order on their site and before we go i want to show this really cool thing that came uh for cure for wellness that fox sent over this really cool promo item uh about the release of cure for wellness which is I, you know, I looked through what was in here. This is so cool because I, like I told you, I absolutely love this movie. Like I said, I'll have a review of it soon. But 
if you know the movie, it's about going to this wellness spa with all like the, these weirder people who go there and like they have like these robes and stuff. And they included these like sh these slippers that they walk around in, in the film. And then this rope done in the style of that, you know, that, that the characters in the spa are wearing. And then this thing is so cool. It's the dropper that they have in the movie because they're always taking these vitamins and like dropping them on their tongue and stuff. It is an amazing, amazing movie. It's one of those movies that kind of like went over a lot of people's heads, but I love that movie. Let's take a look to what this robe looks like. And before we take a closer look at the robe, they also included in here this uh, dentist kit kind of thing. It's like this really creepy thing. I didn't even know you could buy these kind of things. The dentist like picks your teeth at that, you know, the thing that's this. They scrape it. I think they put that, you know, to look at them closer up and stuff, the mirror and stuff. That's just a really cool thing in here. But now let's take a look at the robe. And here's a little look at the robe here. This is such a cool promo item. Like I said, in the movie, everyone is all going to this wellness spa, and Dane Dehan has to go there to pick, you know, find his boss and get him to come back and sign these papers. And they're all walking around in these robes and stuff, and kind of like in these like don't care attitudes. But such a great movie. Like one of those movies, not because they sent anything like that. If you watch my In the Car review, I really love the movie as well. But just such a really cool. Uh, kind of like a 70s kind of vibe movie but if you guys haven't seen that one definitely check out the movie really love that and just a really cool promo item for the movie but anyway though guys now it's all you know the end of this video thanks again for watching and subscribing and i'll see you guys later